and let's go ahead and give them a chance. And they tried it, and it worked. Burning rose to the dying sun in lions fur. The All-American Girls Professional Baseball League really was a product of World War II. And that's the one that was featured in the movie A League of Their Own back in, in, in the 90s. And uh, Philip Wrigley, the owner of the Chicago Cubs, was concerned that a lot of the ball fields out there might not be used, including all the minor league fields, because a lot of the minor leagues had shut down because all the men were in the service. So let's do that, but also let's make sure that the public stays interested in baseball. Because really, they weren't even sure if Major League Baseball was going to continue. That was kind of a question mark. I mean, President Roosevelt said, yes, you're going to play, but how do you maintain the level that you had when Joe DiMaggio and Ted Williams have gone off to war? So some of it was just to keep an interest in baseball, and some of it was a sense of an opportunity. Because being in Chicago, he knew there were plenty of women out there who could play ball. He played well, the fans came, and it took off from there. It spread around the Midwest, and it came to Grand Rapids in 1945. At the time during World War II, they had a really great impact on the city, um, on our morale. They got a lot of people out to the ball fields here. And um, you can see from the time period that they were just really a loved um, group of women. For these women baseball players, there was a lot of challenges with them being women. You know, it wasn't um, the normal thing for a woman to be playing baseball at that time. It was really a male-dominated sport. Uh, there was lots of uh, changes that had to be made um, for these women players. Um, one of the most obvious one when you, uh, when you learn about um, the All-American Girls Baseball League is the uniforms. The uniforms were a skirt style uh, tunic. That would have made it really challenging to play in. You know, men were wearing pants and to be able to play baseball in a dress was just a very uh, unique experience for these women. I wanted to kind of capture 1945 aesthetics into my painting while also making it very colorful. So all these photos that I got were originally in black and white and I decided to make them all blue just to give them more of a pop of color. I learned quite a bit. Um, one of the players, Connie Wisnowski, she is actually one of the best female baseball players of all time. So I made her quite large on this wall over here. And we also have just a lot of very strong players. Well, part of the selling point really was that you had live sports going on and you could see baseball games. Uh, and that was something that was certainly popular. And at that point, you don't have television. Uh, you have fewer options for entertainment. It was relatively inexpensive. It was convenient. Uh, they played at South Field, which was the South High School field, kind of near southeast side of Grand Rapids. So you could get there pretty easily. Uh, and it was also different. You know, one of the women players from Grand Rapids that we interviewed, Marilyn Jenkins, when asked, you know, why was this popular? She said, well, it's, it's girls in skirts playing ball, it's, which is crazy in the sense that if you slide into a base, you do bad things to your legs, which happen. But uh, on the other hand, it, it drew the fans. Film footage mm -hmm. of girls, I should say women, sliding into a base. Mm -hmm. Now, the men had these long, protected pants. Right. What was that like? You know, I think it was something that, um, well, it wasn't pleasant. I, I had some pretty good strawberries, as we call them. Uh, but it was expected of us. That was, I, I think, I, I can say this with a reasonable amount of certainty, too, that if you would have put these women in 1945 in a, a pant, forget it. It wouldn't have worked. That's the way I see it. It would have been easier on their legs, but I think that was... I've heard Dottie Hunter talk about this. That was the magic. Phil Wrigley was really sharp and his advisors there, the way they put this together, okay? That movie depicted that well too, the movie. Part of their training was going to charm school. So at charm school, what that meant was they were trained to wear cosmetics. Um, they would have to have ladylike behaviors. And there's uh, also things like just, you know, general etiquette that they had to live up to when they were out um, in the public eye. 
So their baseball cards were taken out of circulation for a long time until a bunch of local historians and groups in Grand Rapids decided that they wanted to bring them back into circulation. So they had a lot of things happening to, to them historically and I think that it's super interesting and super important for people to learn about them.